All right, everyone, now it's time to talk about the Stop Woke Act. This is down in Florida. DeSantis, the champion of that. Uh, it has been blocked. Uh, no, uh, no stay, by the way, was issued by an activist judge down there named Mark Walker. And uh, on, in, on review in a higher court, it will be upheld. Uh, it's clearly not discriminatory. In fact, it's anti-discriminatory. There's nothing problematic or vague about the bill. Um, it's cast off as, you know, uh, hateful and bigoted. But if you actually look at what it suggests, it's fairly simplistic. It's a no-brainer. It doesn't take a lot of analysis or any particular insight in order to understand what the bill does. It effectively just stops educators and people in businesses associated with the state government, so getting taxpayer money, from teaching people that uh, uh, their race is inherently privileged and evil, their reparations, the cotton skyscrapers fallacy, etc., and from uh, teaching that discrimination is a useful tool for solving any perceived bigoted issues. Well, this is a no-brainer, uh, but who would oppose this? <laughs> Other than people that are involved in identity politics and their entire political career is the result of them saying white people bad. Other than that, I can't think of any other group of people who would reasonably assess that this bill, if they actually read it and understood it, uh, was a bad idea. And the fact is that wokeness is weakness. Critical race theory is revisionist horseshit from communism, explicitly derived from communism. It is fine to be white and you shouldn't feel crippling guilt over what your ancestors did. They're not you. Um, and, and this is fine. No, uh, you should not be giving boatloads of money to people who have not been enslaved, who have not been discriminated against, and discriminating against other people in retaliation is not helpful. <laughs> this, is, this was kind of uh, sacrosanct. I remember as a kid in the 90s and stuff, the idea was, hey, look, he's black and you're white, you're both basically the same, you're both human, you're both Americans, fucking get along and, and stop ridiculing one another. That has gone so far out of the window. It's like they purged a bunch of early Sesame Street episodes the other day. And I'm wondering, did any of those Sesame Street episodes get purged because they said, hey, we're all different colors, but we're all part of the same human rainbow and we should get along. And this is no longer woke and politically correct. It's considered to be evil. That's being ignorant of people's historical suffering or something like that. I support this act. It will be upheld in the higher court level. Uh, the hope is that it goes nationwide, actually. The hope is that other states will take up the basic same premise, which is that, no, people should not be discriminated against. People should not be excluded from safe spaces for groups of uh, members of one particular race or ethnicity or gender or creed, uh, because it's not helpful. It's, it's deeply disturbing. It's basically a sign of weakness, by the way, by the people who design such things. Um, historically speaking, we've tried to get past this. We have tried to get past Jim Crow and segregation and the internment act of FDR of Asian Americans, etc., etc. The, the general thought of, of, I guess now, yesteryear, which is the, the age-old time, the, the ye old times of the 90s and 2000s, was, hey, that's the past. It's a blot on our history. Uh, slavery was bad, segregation bad, throwing Japanese Americans into concentration camps bad. Let's not do that anymore. Let's treat people equally and get past this shit and just uh, party together and shit. That was the basic premise of the good times of the 90s and <laughs> to an extent at least uh, most of the 2000s. Now, the new ethos of the woke movement uh, is no, 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 we shouldn't get past it. We should restore it. It's just that we should aim it at the other side or something. Uh, so for the sins of your grandfathers, you should have to suffer. You are privileged because you have white skin. Yeah, I know that you're living on a, in a dirt-floored cabin in Appalachia where your illiterate mother has 17 children and is currently pregnant and sitting in the kitchen getting a Budweiser for the deadbeat dad or something, and there's heroin everywhere and nobody even has a fucking bed to sleep in, and all the kids have to wear the same two pairs of old shoes in shifts, but you're privileged because you're white. It's, the government didn't screw people over, even though the government literally incepted literally every aspect of segregation and Jim Crow, mostly the Democrats on that one. Uh, slavery was incepted by a governing body. It was not simply created out of thin air by random white people. Most of them never owned slaves because they too were impoverished and working in the fields 10 hours a day, six days a week. But you should have to suffer for these things. 
It's the cotton skyscraper fallacy, the idea that uh, southern plantation agriculture built up the industrial north uh, in and of itself is hilarious. The, the act itself simply says enough of the revisionist horseshit, teach actual shit in schools, number one. And number two, stop telling kids uh, or your employees that discriminating against other people is good. This, this should be labeled the Anti-Discrimination Act. Some of its provisions are explicitly for that purpose, but it's being blocked anyway for being overly vague and uh, nobody could possibly support this. If you read the judge's decision, it's actually all sorts of wonky. It's, uh, it's almost, uh, I mean, uh, who did you donate to in the last election? Bernie Sanders? <laughs> Jesus Christ. Probably Kamala Harris, actually. So shame on the judge in this case. You're going to get overturned, and you probably know it. The Stop Woke Act is a good idea, fundamentally. DeSantis is doing nothing wrong by imposing it. It's like the idea of the Don't Say Gay Bill, which is also separately maligned. Uh, it has nothing to do with not saying gay. It has to do with teachers not needing to share their sexual proclivities with small children. Ta-da! That's basically it. That and not showing them porn. It doesn't matter if it's gay or straight porn. Nobody gives a shit. You shouldn't be showing it to third graders. It's the same thing as this. The Stop Woke Act is dragged up and down the street by leftoids who apparently are hoping that you're just too stupid to read the bill it, uh, itself and understand what's actually in it. It is perfectly fine if a taxpayer-funded school, including a college, by the way, or a business taking tax funds for some, uh, uh, for some purpose under contract by the government, are prevented, because they're being paid by the people of the state, are prevented from teaching revisionist nonsense and telling people that discrimination is a good idea. If you had a business that was run by David Duke down in Florida, and he was telling his white employees, well, it's okay to say racial slurs to your brown co-workers. I don't think that the Stop Woke Act, which would prevent this from happening, or that company from getting a grant or contract if it was engaging in such behavior, would be considered politically incorrect or bizarre. I don't think the average person would have a problem with the application of that same concept under the law. But if it's a business that's run by pink-haired freaks with trust funds and daddy's credit card who drinks soyant all day, oh my god, it's a First Amendment issue. They have the right to say what they want. No, they don't. They're government employees or people that are taking taxpayer money. They don't have unfettered First Amendment rights in an organizational capacity at the top-down level in that situation. If a private employee at Pink Hair Incorporated wants to spout off revisionist commie bullshit, they're perfectly within their right. But for the boss to force the employees to come into the boardroom and sit down and listen to him lecture them for 30 minutes or an hour on commie bullshit is not going to be tolerated. It's as simple as that. There should be a similar application, by, by, by the way, with regards to people in general. A private citizen who has no position of legal capacity or authority should be able to do and say whatever the fuck they want. They want to be racist, let them be racist. They want to be bigoted, let them be bigoted. They're a commie, let them say commie shit on the street corner. But if a judge or a police officer or someone else who is funded by the public in some capacity, in some le so the public doesn't have a choice but to fund them. They've got an elected position, an appointed position. They should not be able to do these things. There are certain standards that we expect of public officials. It's as simple as that. If they're on their own time, the cop goes home and they want to say crazy shit in front of their family, I don't care. If they're on the street corner, though, saying the N-word, that's going to be a problem. Why is it then not a problem if that same person, funded by taxpayer money, is sitting on the street corner saying bizarre revisionist bullshit and saying white people need to take the knee? It's the same thing. There is no difference. Reverse racism does not exist. It's all just the same form of slurry of bigotry. That's about all. Peace out.